Well, here we are, Thanksgiving once again. Man, and I'm sure our Canadian listeners are rolling their eyes and pretending that theirs is the real Thanksgiving, but we know they started doing it almost a decade after us, and theirs is based on that time a British princess rash cleared up, so I don't think so. But this is a weird one for me, I got to admit, because I got something of a tradition to uphold here. Like, for whatever reason, we decided many moons ago that we were going to release our show on Thursday, and we further decided that Thanksgiving was no excuse to skip an episode. We do, after all, have listeners outside of the U.S. So every year for the last seven years... I have popped in here to give some variation of my same, oh my God, or fuck Uncle Frank and his turkey ruining Jesus shit themed diatribe. But like so many Thanksgiving traditions, we're going to be setting that one aside this year because Uncle Frank isn't coming to Thanksgiving dinner. For most of us, there won't really be a Thanksgiving dinner except in that you will still have dinner today. So, you know, every time you start missing the togetherness of the food, maybe take some comfort in reminding yourself that you're also missing conversational prompts like, you're never going to believe what God told me the other night, and you know what's communist to me. Of course, if that was enough to keep you away, you'd already stay away. And I guess a lot of you do, right? I mean, a hell of a lot of you don't even do it by choice. I've talked to plenty of our listeners who just no longer get invited to the big family get-togethers. And it strikes me that those are the families most likely to still be having the interstate potluck this year regardless. And, and I'm sure that some of you are being guilted all to hell for not going to the family super spreader event. After all, Great Aunt Linda isn't going to make it to many more of these, especially with how careless all you stupid assholes are about wearing masks and shit. Hell, I'd, I'd imagine that some of you probably are actually going to a Thanksgiving thing this year against your own better judgment because you've decided that the hell that you would pay with your family is worse than the risk that you're taking on some level. But regardless of where you are right now, whether you're missing out on a big family get-together this year or only wish that you were, it's probably a lot harder than normal to think up a bunch of stuff to be thankful for. So I thought I'd jumpstart you with a nomination of my own. I'm thankful for you. And I know I say that one way or the other every year, but I genuinely mean it. I mean, still, sincerity is no excuse for redundancy. I'd really mean it if I mentioned once a year that Mars had an approximate axial tilt of 25 degrees. That doesn't justify the repetition. But this time, I'm thankful for you for a different reason. Or actually, I, now that I think about it, I, I'm thankful for you for the same reason, but I know it for a different reason. See, you're my only hope for humanity. When we first started this show, it's because I'd met Heath and I was like, wow, a rational, sane person. Weird. Haven't met one of those since Lucinda. And then I thought about how that really shouldn't be so few and far between. Now, I'm an entertainer. I, I traveled constantly. I lived in a new state almost every year. I met a lot of fucking people. And while I'd met a great many that I'd liked, I'd only met two who were sane. Two people who could consistently correctly answer questions like, is there a ghost helping us find a parking space right now? Or does, does water have different properties when you think happiness at it? And those seem like such easy questions to me. Of course, in truth, that's, uh, you know, a bit of an exaggeration, but, but nowhere near as much as I'd like. You know, I, I had discovered the skeptical and atheist communities online at that point, though rationality was still depressingly absent from them from time to time. It was at the very least valued. It was the agreed upon goal. And even that seemed a radical departure from basically every group of humans I'd ever seen assembled. But at the time, that hope seemed like something of a novelty. You know, the demise of our culture, though apparent, hadn't taken form yet. You know, it seemed safely distant back then, or I, I guess safely is overstating it a bit, but it wasn't like an immediate matter of life and death. Of course, if you're one of those people doing it right over the last nine months or so, wearing your mask, canceling trips, dining in, staying home and all that shit, it's been real easy to feel like nobody gives a damn about the sacrifices that you're making. If you're one of those folks unlucky enough to be deemed essential in your job, all the more so. I mean, some people occasionally remember to pay lip service to how awesome it is that you risk your life to restock their canned broth, but... I feel like that exacerbates the problem more than anything. But try to remind yourself as you sit alone or in a tiny group this Thanksgiving or restock broth. One of the reasons you feel so underappreciated is because all the people smart enough to appreciate you are also hunkered down. I mean, even if you're in the grocery store or something like I know Lucinda and I are down to like two trips a month at most, whereas the Trump public and assholes in town still stop in to buy the drinks that they sell in the vending machines out front. And if you think about it, it's kind of always been that way. 
When we walk around surrounded by religious zealots and people who think water remembers if you were mean to it, we don't know which ones are secretly rational. When you see the headphones in their ear, you don't know that this show isn't also playing in those. You know, the whole point of this podcast has always been to remind everybody that their rationality is appreciated even when they can't tell. And I cannot imagine anything that would underscore that better than 2020.